Jesse and Galley on the back end. We got Diesel kicking in the front. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome once again to Mon Ice Arena on the campus of Michigan State University. Another afternoon matinee, Michigan State taking on the Sun Devils of Arizona State here for the fourth and final time on the regular season. Got to get this win here tonight. Six of our last nine are here at home, but it's against the top four teams in the Big Ten, right. so it doesn't get any easier after this. Chris shot in, deflected, still rebound loose in front of the net. The Goal comes off the post. Sent it to the corner. Michigan State controls. And now a shot and a goal for Michigan State. The initial shot from the right point by Gallagher. The rebound to Jagger Joshua. Jagger Joshua was doing a great job in front, making it difficult for Brady to see that puck. Simic with it near the Big Ten logo. One timer sent away. Puck loose in front of the net to Ritter. Finds it. Made it through to Drew DeRitter. He makes the save in traffic and hangs on. Penalty killers back out on the ice for the Spartans. O'Reilly down to the goal line, out to the right circle, shot goal. 17.35 to go, 1-1 one, one tie. He's given up some rebounds this evening, Scott. So you're a forward, you got to go to the net hard. You want to score, you're going to have an opportunity to get some rebounds here. And coming out with it is Jagger Joshua attacking. Oh, Bad angle type it's shot, it. and it's a goal for Michigan State. A real collision right in front of everything. They're going to have to take another look at this one. They will for sure. Nico Mueller's going to get credited for this for now. Yes. Good goal for the Spartans. Riley will pick it up, and the horn will sound. Another tough one here at Mon Ice Arena, but the Spartans get the win. The final score, Michigan State 2, Arizona State 1. I guess the best way to describe Rayvon is he's always developing in all, all aspects of his life, not just in wrestling. That's what makes him unique. I mean, whether we're talking about music, just the knowledge of history of music, or his education, um, just kind of always advancing himself. I think that's what makes him so special, is um, he's always looking for unique ways to advance himself and further himself in life. His older brother, Billy, was five years older than him in school. And uh, Billy, I think, asked me at one at point if we could bring Ray Vaughn along. Uh, and it was like uh, freestyle tournaments. And I think Ray Vaughn was in fifth grade. I had some friends who were like, yeah, these men right here are like, they're special. These are some men who are going to help you, not even just as a wrestler, but as a man. And after my freshman year, I started to... Um, wrestled for what was called the Warriors. It was a like an AAU team, uh, freestyle Greco, stuff like that. And um, so I was like, well, if I'm gonna go and my brother's at home, like I might as well just bring him with me. Like, So <laughs> anytime I like went, I was like, come on. I expected wrestling to be like WWE, but when I got there, I saw these dudes and like, you know, regular t-shirt shorts just running around on this mat that really didn't seem interesting at all. But then when you saw what people were doing and you saw like, your guy just picked that guy up and just slammed him on the ground, you know? And that, that was kind of like my introduction, just watching a little bit. And then, you know, that same day, I actually ended up practicing. My coach, he, he took this singlet and he handed it to me. And he was like, you're gonna put that on. And I'm like, that's too big. And then I put it on and they take these clips and they put them on the singlet. He was like a natural, like, <laughs> I, I can't like, like he was so natural. Like as soon as he stepped in there, I was like, oh, wow. I was actually so energized about the whole experience and stuff. I decided that night I wanted to really do this. Growing up on sports, coming from where we came from, sports is always seen as kind of like, that's the way to go. You know, you want to be a basketball player, you want to be a football player. No one ever really talks about a wrestler, you know? And as I was like seeing it, I'm like, oh, wrestlers go to college too. And they have opportunities too. Maybe my brother's like, not like the smartest kid in the world, you know? But 
he works really hard at what he does. And I know if he can work really hard, I know he might have an opportunity to take himself somewhere else. That's what I love about my brother is that he always pushes me to always be better and never to like settle. He wants me to always achieve higher. It's my brother, so I, I'd risk everything for my brother, you know. I'd do anything for my brother to, you know, see him be successful, see him go to the next level, see him accomplish whatever it is he want to accomplish. But it was very important for me to ha ha help him find something, you know, something that was going to keep him focused, keep him aligned with a purpose and to, to get somewhere. Wrestling was like the perfect like way for him to you know, get all of that energy out and really get to express himself also, you know, but wrestling is so much about control and being able to, you know, pace yourself. Growing up with my mom and my siblings, it was definitely rough because my mom struggled to find work and we lived on food stamps and on section eight. So it was, it was definitely difficult to like, I would say be maintain a good emotional state at times. There's a lot of times where life was very dark and there was like no, there was no like light at the end of the tunnel. And there was a lot of times where it was me and my brother who were there together, you know? And as long as we had each other, we could find a light at the end of the tunnel. I didn't realize at the time that my mom was struggling to maintain all of us. So a lot of times I would get angry if she didn't like do enough for me specifically. Um, she didn't really show up to a lot of my wrestling meets. So our relationship like during like my early years were like, like early years of my life were it was it was a little rough. It was it was definitely difficult to maintain like sort of emotional, a, a good emotional state at times, because it could be like tough being home and seeing mom struggle to maintain things and handle all, all of us. You know, I, I would fight, that's how I would vent. I would yell at my teachers, I would lash out at people. Um, and like, that's kind of like how I dealt with things growing up. Um, was just like through pure emotion and just anger and I just would get angry at stuff. I just learned how to control my emotions and deal with them through wrestling. His uh, freshman year at uh, Pioneer, he competed all season long and he was like 88 pounds. So the weight class um, was uh, 103. Being that small at that weight was like, wow. I'd never seen anything like that. Like. I'm like, this little, like, person is like, he's winning. Like, he's winning. And I'm like, you know, and it's, it really showed me how much, you know, technique and how much skill Rayvon truly had at that level. And me and my friends, we really, like, set a goal. And we were like, we're, we're going to push each other and we're going to be the best. And none of us won the, the state championship. But that vision and that passion passed on from all of us to my brother. And he was able to take that and go to the next level and do something that we weren't able to do, win the state championship, win a national championship. Like he was able to do a lot of things and not just because of me, but because of everyone who um, put that love and that passion into um, him and to, into each other because of how we all felt for each other. Uh, Rayvon is a great competitor, fierce, works hard, um, a lot of people, you know, think it comes natural, but Rayvon works hard at it. And he was always the hardest working individual in the room, um, day in and day out. State called me up the summer, literally the summer of my senior year. And they were like, hey, we think you would be good for our program. And I signed that year. I remember talking to Chandler about, you know, coming here and he told me, I know that you, you struggle with school. I know you struggle with these things. But I think once you come here and you get established, that I think you will be successful. As we got to know him, we realized that uh, he was pretty green. You know, everything was something new to him. 
when you come across somebody where everything's a new experience to somebody like Rayvon, I think, uh, you know, the sky is the limit because um, some people get to experience a lot of things in their life and Rayvon never got that opportunity and um, wrestling was his vehicle um, to do that. Chandler was willing to take a chance on me because he saw what I was dealing with and he knew that if I had an opportunity to develop on my own and make choices, I think he knew that I could become successful and I could do well here. I get more satisfaction in watching these young men achieve their personal goals than I ever did as a competitor. And I love seeing growth. And growth is the biggest thing in life, is, you know, if we continue to grow each and every day and try to make ourselves a better person, a better version of ourselves, I think the world's going to be a better place. And Ravon's, you know, perfect proof of that. No other coach, no other program had talked to me like that. I could really do something and I could fulfill my potential. He knew that I was going to take the opportunity serious once I got here. Rayvon is the consummate person who wants more information. He's always striving to be better and uh, that's a unique quality. A lot of people are stuck in their ways and I think we all get stuck in our ways but uh, he's always looking for ways to improve himself just as a person, not just as a wrestler, but uh, so that's probably his number one unique quality. No matter what, no matter what you go through, no matter what life puts you through, that you can make it as long as you just keep pushing, you just keep working. In those ways, it's the principles that wrestling has taught me has changed my life. And I followed those principles and those kind of universal laws of wrestling to lead me to the position that I am in. It has definitely changed my life, and I'm happy to say that. I always think goalie's the coolest position on the ice. You get to design your own pads, your own helmet, and now even you know your own sticks. And uh, I think there's definitely a similarity between a goalie designing their helmet and maybe somebody going to get a tattoo. You can put anything you want on there, and uh, if something's really that special to you to maybe get a tattoo or something, you know, you can kind of have the same thing and put it on a on your goalie mask. It means a lot. I mean, first, it, it keeps your face looking okay. And it's honestly the coolest part of the gear that you get to design because you get to design every part of it, kind of like put some really meaningful stuff on it and express who they are underneath the mask, too. I wanted to have a green base to my helmet. The one team I looked at a lot of helmets for was the Minnesota Wild. Obviously, they have the green color as well. So I, I looked at some of the ones that had the green base and to see kind of what worked and what didn't work. Obviously there's just the Michigan State logo there, the Spartan head. I thought that was a pretty cool logo obviously to put on there nice and big. Across the top on both sides we got just some tall pine trees. Obviously Michigan State has a lot of trees around campus. The big ones behind Mun Ice Arena is kind of what I put them on there. And then on the front I just got my number put on there, 29. Yeah, the other side we got the other logo, the Michigan State one we got on our jerseys. Yeah, on the back, I just put the little state logo on the bottom. I saw that one on the basketball jerseys. It was pretty cool, so I tried to add it on there. Obviously, the Canadian flag, that's where I'm from. It's just a nice way to uh, be able to look at that when you put it on and just remember like your family back home and where you grew up and all that kind of thing and what, what made you play the game at the start. So it's uh, always been special to me. We had a lot of influence on our design, actually. We were uh, pretty fortunate to uh, pick what we wanted on it, and it was a fun process. Someone calls you, uh, you know, just said, what do you want on your helmet? You know, give me a, a sketch of what, what could possibly be on there, what's the main design of it, and then he sends you like four or five options, you choose which one you like, and then he paints it pretty well, too. So I wanted something like somewhat basic, I didn't want it to be you know, too flashy or anything like that. So I knew I wanted like a half and half kind of thing, half green, half white, you know, go green, go white. And then uh, we put the Spartans down the middle just to kind of all blend the, the two colors together. And then I kind of like how it balances each other out. And then I got my number, number 30 down here. Right here, we have the Chicago skyline. I'm a Chicago boy, born and raised, go Hawks. Right here is actually one of the coolest things I've ever had on a helmet. So. Um, 
My grandpa passed away about eight years ago. He was 94 years old when he died. And when I did end up committing a state a few days after, my mom sent me a picture of my grandpa, Grandpa Roy, wearing a Spartan hat, which was, which was a really cool moment for me because he never went to Michigan State. I don't have any siblings that ever went to Michigan State. It was kind of like a, a full circle moment that this is where I'm supposed to be, and it was, it was the right decision. So I think the back is the most important for a lot of goalies. I think a lot of goalies put a lot of like, you know, family stuff and, and that towards the back of their helmets. I come from a really big family. I'm the second youngest of eight. These are all my siblings' names with my parents' names on the top. I have a shark back here for my other grandpa, Grandpa Mikey, who passed away. It says Grandpa Mikey lives on, G-M-L-O. The reason it's a shark is he broke a world record in, in Hawaii. He caught an 1,100 pound like tiger shark on a, on a really small test line. So that's why we always put the shark and this symbol that hangs in our house as well. Morrissey is my nickname. A lot of people know me as Morrissey. And uh, I got the American flag, Chicago flag, and then dedicated to Noel Moore on here, which I've had on my last three helmets. Um, my older brother, Robbie, this was his wife. She sadly passed away from, from cancer. And that was obviously hard for our family. So I thought I would dedicate this helmet to her. And this is a very meaningful thing to me and something that'll be around me forever. Over the years, I've kind of developed some similarities between all my masks. I, I always seem to end up with a, a logo on that side and a different logo on that side, just kind of simple. And then the design process that I go through, I always, uh, you know, take a stroll through Instagram and go through the, the pages of the different painters. And there was a mask that had the, the lines on top and then just simple like logos on the, on the sides. And I pretty much kind of gave that to the painter and let him run free with that. And uh, this is what he came back with. I started out with just like, I wanted, you know, three lines on top. And from there, I always have like, you know, you don't want it to be too boring. So you got to put some kind of design down here. So. We just got like the stripe and that, that's what I start out with, just like the lines and the stripes and uh, kind of getting the background set up. And then, then from there, you gotta figure out like what, what logos I want on the side. And then, so I ended up going with the S this year on, uh, on my left side and then uh, the Spartan head on the other side. And I, uh, yeah, I like the, this side of the mask a little bit more probably. I love how the Spartan head looks on there. And uh, you know, from there, I, I got my number on there like always. And uh, so on the back, you know, nothing too special. I just got the, the Michigan State lo script logo on there. And then I got my, my team nickname, Diesel, on there. It's a little bit harder to see. You don't really see it until you, you hold the mask and get a little closer. I got uh, subliminal logos, you know, here on the chin. I got Spartan head over here. And then up on top, I got S's all the way down the green stripes. Some of my favorite things that I've ended up doing is, is uh, the glow in the dark paint that I had in my Cedar Rapids mask. The guy came to me with an idea. He's like, hey, I just got this glow in the dark paint. I want to try it on your mask. What do you think? I'm like, oh yeah, that's awesome. We'll try that. And then on my USA mask, I, I thought that that's probably one of my favorites. You know, it was uh, bright red and just, just popped, you know. And I, I think I might try to go that direction in the next year. This could be one of those wins if Tom Izzo and Michigan State can get it. I know they've been down this year, but they've got a lot of opportunities to bolster a resume. Down low to Jackson Davis. Ryan Marvel spin, shoots off the glass, and it's good. I'm telling you, Indiana is out hustling, out working, being more physical. They're basically out Michigan stating Michigan State. Henry in the corner sinks a three. Delaney goes, floaters away. It's good and we're tied at 26. All of a sudden, Michigan State's found something. And if you can believe this, at one point, Michigan State trailed this thing by 13. Langford. Whoa, five in a row, a little carnival game for him. Brown, 4-3. Thompson intercepted by Henry. The big and slams it home. Henry leans and scores. And it may have been a Spartan revival on this day in Bloomington, Indiana, 78-71.